What's going on, y'all? Boy, Russell the Fourth. Hey, everybody, it's me, Brandy. And welcome to another episode of the What They Never Told Us podcast. What's going on? Back in the building, one week away from Christmas. Not even a week. It's some days, six days, five days, or something like that. Christmas on Sunday. We yeah, here. That's crazy. I ain't ready. <laughs> L- literally, we're not ready. Yeah, no, we're not ready. A lot of stuff we gotta do still. Amazon better hurry yet. I do this to myself every single year, every year. Well, I will say that we could have brought gifts a little earlier if our children were a little bit more forthcoming with what it is that they wanted. So I definitely started this conversation very early, like at the end of summer. And it has changed 50, 11 times since then. I actually had a gift. We bought a whole <laughs> Xbox and just in casual conversation, my son's like, I don't want no Xbox. I don't know who, I, if I don't get no PlayStation, I don't want nothing. I said, let me get on this Target app and take this right on back. I returned it really quickly. That part. <laughs> my $250. It's the problem with having blessed kids. They, they feel like they got everything. <laughs> and then the stuff that they do want to be like, you're not going to get that. My yeah. Lily, our nine-year-old, talking about some, I want a MacBook. You have lost your mind. <laughs> Like, you don't need that. All you about to do is watch YouTube and play Roblox. The same thing that you do on your, like, device. You and don't need that. Braylon, who can't walk up the stairs or sit in a chair without falling and hurting himself, <laughs> wants a VR. I'm like, yeah, this no. This is just beyond <laughs> you not. You, you no. have no idea what you need in life. Like, so it has been a struggle, but, you But know. take these V-Bucks and be happy. Ready or not, here it come. I guess I'm just going to start getting miscellaneous things. I am very thankful for Roblox and Fortnite, though. It's an automatic gift that will make them happy regardless. How do you? It's free. No. Robux, V-Bucks. Uh, Buy them. That's a whole gift. See, and that's, kids that's, are excited. That's part of the influence of your family that I'm not appreciative of. My family? Yeah, Cinco had the stock, everything. <laughs> he had the, <laughs> when he started that game, whatever they told him he was. If it was a blonde white girl, that's who he was that day. If it was a black man, he was happy. He was cool with it. But whatever they said he was is what he was. Then Bray like, look at all these skins I got. <laughs> Ray was flexing. Look at his gun. I, I, got, got. I already had that skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, single coming to me. Hey, Dad, can I get some? Ah, okay, here we go. Well, the same. Go. It was the opposite way with Robux. So Roblox. So that's no, true. My kids did not play Roblox. They didn't play that. And yeah. now the five year old is like, "Can I have some Robux, Mommy? Can I buy this?" And she has no idea, like concept of real cash. She yeah. Comes showing me one of the things, ninety nine dollars. I said, "Girl, have you, you have lost, lost your, your mind?" <laughs> Like, no. She's like, but it's going to make me look pretty. You look pretty regardless. Go. Bye. You have officially <laughs> lost your mind. So I've told them. I'm like, I don't spend real money on fake money. Yeah. So Christmas, birthdays is the chance to splurge on the Robux and the V-Bucks. So Absolutely. If nothing else, I got two gifts. There you go. <laughs> and shout out to everybody. Merry Christmas to you guys early. Um, y'all already know y'all are family. Y'all know y'all are community y'all are our am i saying it right Come y'all on, are get, our get it together why does that not sound right y'all are it's our no our our y'all are our family uh-huh. okay i spent way too much time with that i apologize <laughs> yes, <you did>. <laughs> y'all are family and we appreciate you guys so much so happy holidays to you guys merry christmas all that good stuff happy kwanzaa happy hanukkah whatever it is that you <laughs> whatever it is that you celebrate yeah, you during this time me. Happy birthday, Jesus. It's on and popping. We about to get it. That part. I wonder, should we do something special for New Year's? Uh, no. Take me <laughs> away. <laughs> I'm in for the podcast. No. <laughs> oh, that's Sorry, right. y'all. Yeah. For those of you guys who don't know, um, Mrs. Davis's birthday is New Year's Day. Okay. The first clap day of the year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you request clap. a clap? Clap Okay, there me. we go. Yep. And you get some oh. air horns, baby. <laughs> So, yeah, that's coming up. I'll, I'll save all the hoopla for the episode before then. But, but. y'all can send us an extra few cash apps, you know. We trying to go to Chicago, trying to do it big. So. Hey, if there ever was Add a day to, to, to blow up the what they never told us cash app, 
It would be the birthday, okay? <laughs> That's not true. I do not want. I do not want them to splurge on that for my birthday. Y'all can splurge and send us money so we can do the live finale, so we can do the game night, so we can do a bunch of other stuff. But not my birthday. Just tell me happy birthday and I'll be happy. Love y'all. Yeah, just send it in. It's all good. <laughs> It is all good. Then that's gonna have us going back on all the times we said we do not spend podcast money on personal things. There's a first for everything. <laughs> it's a first time for everything. And your birthday would be a good occasion. Um, but yeah. So we did an episode, a couple episodes back called Hot Topics, kind of like a current events type situation. And I really enjoyed that episode. It was, it was a vibe. Fun. I like not having like one monotone yeah. topic that we have to stick to like because sometimes my head be going other places i'm like oh, i don't have nothing to do with what we talking about we can't take so, it there yeah. we finna go wherever the <laughs> lord leads today okay we finna go for it so got some topics on the docket today and of course you know tomorrow we want you to chime in with them so gather your thoughts and uh bring them to the live tomorrow what we got on the docket babe what's up so the first one is not a clip or anything, and it's been plastered all over the internet, which I have mixed feelings about. But it was a young lady who appeared to have just gotten her hair done, maybe teenager, preteen, can't really tell these days. Um, and her mom comes into the clip filming and it's talking to her about being disobedient and how her disobedience has now made the mother upset. She told her not to get her hair done a certain way. She was like, so now since looking pretty is more important to you, I'm going to take this hair down. And her way of taking the hair down, the girl had like the big um, box braids and she literally cut her hair out at the ponytail. It was, she probably wow. had about 10 braids in her hair. <laughs> Phone ringing on the pod. <laughs> My wow. bad. First time I didn't hit do not disturb. My bad. Keep, keep going back. And um, her mom cut out her hair. So it left this big debate on whether, number one, mom was right or wrong for doing what she did, whether she was right or wrong for filming it, and then what type of impression, what type of stigma are you now leaving your child with after you've, one ruined her hair like she cut it down to the nubs that's like, crazy she basically is gonna have to fade her hair after this um two wow. you've embarrassed her because this post has gone viral i've literally seen it on every social media platform that i'm on it's been on facebook it's been on instagram and it's been on tiktok i don't know how i haven't seen this i don't either and i was trying to go back and find it i don't it's a visual so i don't think it would be good but if we find a way to like clip it and put it in here maybe we'll try that for youtube but um it was just to me it was shocking and it brought up some like I don't uh, I wasn't planning on going here, but like feelings about like being 18 and feeling like my mom was against me. And mm. there were just certain things that I either couldn't do, which I, I know in her own way, it was meant to be like protection. You know, she lived a certain life and she tried to do everything to keep me from also going down that same path. But in a lot of ways, it, feel like, it felt like, why won't you just let me be great? Like, why is this like, you were your own person, now let me be who I'm gonna be. And I felt really bad for the young lady. Like, I know what it's like to be a teen and be concerned about your looks. And it just, it was shocking to say the least, so. Yeah, I remember those, there was like a, a point in internet infamy where <laughs> there was the trend of parents who had kids who were having behavioral problems where they were just giving them embarrassing haircuts. Like, yeah. you wanna be a clown and you gonna look yeah. like a clown. They I saw that like, mostly with, with little boys though. Exactly, yeah. I've never seen it with a girl. And women in their hair is a thing absolutely but it's Especially even more magnified when you talk about black girls mm -hmm. yeah like it's a it's a different thing and to cut that it's it's heavy i'm a man a bald black man <laughs> so um i'm 100 percent positive that i'm not even sure of the magnitude of what that felt like but i will say this though um parenting is a difficult job it doesn't come with a manual Absolutely. it doesn't come with a manuscript and if you didn't have a good example or if you weren't raised in a way mm -hmm. that was healthy mm -hmm. um a lot of those practices just get 
um, passed down. Yeah. And in terms of black culture, the black family structure, there's a lot of what we've done in our parenting that came from roots of slavery, right? Mm -hmm. So discipline, uh, the way we enforce behavior, a lot of that was learned through plantation culture. Um, I see over the years that we've kind of tapered away at some stuff. And I know a lot of black families are like, yeah, I've never whooped my kid or I'm not gonna do that. Or they're very intentional about how they do discipline. Yes, this gentle parenting move. Now I'm torn because I I'm not with the gentle parenting movement. Like like I've always been torn. Now I have I think when my kids were younger, um, I just kind of naturally went into parenting from what how I was raised, Absolutely. right? And Brenda Davis was a whooper, right? Like <laughs> professional. If there ever was like a professional league of you know whoopers, mm -hmm. she'd be in it. She'd be the LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Like Steph, <laughs> like amazing things she's put together. Um and I'm just torn, right? Because that's not discipline. That's cruel. That's bullying, I think what we Absolutely. see here. So I'm not sure if this fits, but I will say um, I've worked with young people my entire adult life. Mm -hmm. uh, disciplinary issues with kids is like my everyday occurrence. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> some, some of these kids, I'd be like, <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> like, did he get time out at least? <laughs> did you ground him ever? Like, are there any consequences? So... The gentle parents think sometimes I watch on TikTok and I'll be like, yo, what are you doing? Like, this is unrealistic. And yes, it might work for you because you're mom. But a teacher who has no connection to your child mm -hmm. might not translate with that because she's not going to sit in. OK, I waited for 50 minutes for her to stop throwing her tantrum. And even though she hit me in the head with a coffee mug, <laughs> I took a deep breath. You know, moms, sometimes it's difficult. And sometimes you got to go in the bathroom and cry it out. But a teacher's not going to do that. Yeah, They throw a tantrum in the classroom, and there's just immediate consequences. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know how I feel about the gentle parenting thing, but I'm glad that it's a conversation piece now, and we're not just repeating cycles of, oh, this yeah. is how I was raised, so this is how I'm going to do it. I think our, cult, our age group and probably older, like a whooping was standard. Like, and if your parents went to church, they would tell you, oh, don't spare the ride or spoil the child, you know? <laughs> spare the ride, spoil the child. <laughs> Didn't know what it meant, but I promise you, I, that was one of the first Bible verses I do. <laughs> they would tell you that, or, you know, in my household, it was just like, you talk back, you get knocked out. You know, you say your mom was like the queen of whooping. My mom was like the queen of, look, I will fight you, period. My like, too, my too. Through hands, like I can remember uh, many a times, and I, you know, then I didn't think of it as I was being abused. That's just yeah. how it was in my household. My mom definitely has punched me in the chest, choked me up, headlock. You know what I'm saying? Like she went there with me. That's how I know how to fight because I, I had to be able to, you know, <laughs> had to be you. able to buy the weed. I'm trying to call many backhands, <laughs> closed fist. <laughs> okay, yep. Oh wow, you fast. But I feel like. Again, that's just what it was in our household. I don't know the backstory. You know, the mom came on and tried to explain her actions, and she had the little girl there. The little girl looked very robotic. Like, to me, it screamed. She was scared. Scared, minor, abusive, right? And But the mom was like, I don't know why everybody thinks that they have an input. And I'm like, it's because you put it on the Internet. <laughs> you put it on <laughs> the literal capital of I don't, I don't know Input. if you thought that people were going to be like, oh, yes, that's how you do it, sis. But nah, like you opened it up for people's input. So normally this is not something that I would feel comfortable talking yeah. about. But because it's something that was put out there on the Internet, like you open yourself up for feedback. And to me, I, I was in agreement with a lot of people in the comments on every platform that said it screamed jealousy to me. And I think that that's something that we don't really address, especially in the black culture is like this, this jealousy that sometimes lingers between mother and daughter, especially when your mother has had you at a young age, right? And maybe her hopes and dreams and aspirations have had to stop so that she can take care of you. Now you are coming to that age or at that age that your mother was at 
when she gave birth to you mm. and you're not doing the same things and you're not going um, headed on the same path that your mind was headed on. And there's some control there. Like either she's tight grip on you because she doesn't want you to end up where she was or she's tight grip on you because she sees you doing more and she doesn't want you to exceed her in mm. the things that she was able to accomplish. So when I looked at that little girl That's who, heavy. you know, maybe she did do some things wrong, but the things that her mother was talking about to her, not doing homework, to, um, I it was like little stuff, like she said disobeying, which I'm not sure what that meant, mm. but it just didn't rise to the level of, I'm going to do something that's going to publicly embarrass you, probably damage your self-esteem, and like stick with you for a long time because the once it's on the internet, it don't go away. Like, yeah. so she's now in college and she, that girl that her mama cut all her hair off. That's crazy. And I've seen, I can't speak on that. Cause, um, of course I'm a, I'm a boy and I've never seen the, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm that dynamic, boy, but I have seen, um, a semblance of that in my, uh, Family, not my media, but just mm -hmm. I have a relative who there was always this like tension between um, my relative and her mother, um, so much so that she even moved out and uh, lived with another relative because there was just tension there. Mm -hmm. um, and it looked more than just discipline, you know, even everybody else like this, this is too much, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. um, I think if there's something we could pull from this, man, it's just like as parents, in any form of leadership, especially parents, because it's probably one of the most consequential leadership roles that we'll ever have in life, mm -hmm. right? You have to do that from a healthy place. And a lot of times we think that we're doing something out of the guise of I'm the authority figure, mm -hmm. that it's automatically right. Because I'm the parent, I'm right. Yeah. Because I have the might, I'm right. And it rhymed. Come mm -hmm. on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... It's so not true. It's so not true. I um, I remember when I made the decision that I needed to change how I disciplined um, because I started healing, right? Mm -hmm. My, I was very much so, like, I'm cut like my mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's who raised me. And I'm, I think emotionally, I'm temper-wise, temperament-wise, I'm more like her. So um, when... <laughs> my kids was cutting up. My son headstrong, mm -hmm. um, very much so hardwired for leadership, but he'll get with you from a young age. So naturally, you know what I mean? I'm like, who are you talking to? You know what I mean? I put the hand in the butt, you know what I mean? But I realized that I would get so angry. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the time frame where that anger, and you shouldn't be disciplined disciplining your children especially physical mm -hmm. discipline should not come from an angry place mm -hmm. you know what I mean and when I look at the time frame when that was happening it was when my life wasn't you know I mean my yeah. marriage was on the rocks Absolutely. I felt a little depressed um, and I saw that reflected in how I disciplined my children so when we separated and I'm in my own place and I'm starting the healing process, now it just don't feel right. You know what I mean? Now I'm reflecting, I'm like, wow, why did I react like that? And I made a conscious decision like, okay, I see how this is a beneficial. And we all have to do that. We all gotta examine ourselves, right? Because you don't get more than one opportunity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, of course you can always have more kids, <laughs> but I'm talking about with that child. Yes. You're, they'll never be that age again. No, this I, season of their lives is cemented. I have that similar experience. Ever, I had my first son when I was nineteen. I, ain't, I will go on record, and he's heard me say this that I was not going. I wasn't looking for a child. You know what I'm saying? So when he came into my life, I wanted to continue doing everything that I was already doing, but also had a baby a child. quickly found out that that don't really work that don't way like that. and <laughs> when it came to like feeling like an interruption of my plans and then you know I'm not stuck but you know what I'm saying like everybody else is going out but I'm at home things mm -hmm. like that I, I would I would 
recognize that my discipline of him would be different. So like if I wanted to go out, but I didn't have a babysitter and I'm at home, like he's doing little stuff that don't really warrant getting, getting in trouble, but because I'm frustrated because I'm not doing what I wanted to do, (laughs) um, you know, he would get a spanking. So in his mind, he got whoopings all the time. Like if you ask him now, he's like, Oh, you beat me. Like you were like, so a lot of that changed the way that I parent my two youngest children yeah. because I didn't, that was not the case. I wasn't trying to beat him. I wasn't trying to be mean to him. I was young. I was dumb. I was inexperienced with what it meant to actually have a child and be a mother. Um, so the youngest two have never like, they've gotten like a tap on the leg, a tap on the hand. Yeah, Now your kids have no experience <laughs> getting beat. <laughs> maybe I tap them in the mouth if they say something they're not supposed to. But like, I, I mean, maybe once. I saw you pat the baby leg so softly. It was like. And she probably he, fell out. Because even when you did it, I was like, okay, really? <laughs> like You could have you put your hands in your pocket if you was going to do that. She probably fell out. Oh my God. <laughs> you would have thought, you would have thought that this child was just shot in the leg. <laughs> and I think she said, uh, she, the last time that it happened, I patted her on the butt. And she said, you hate me. You, oh, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> you hate me. What? How did we get here? One time you pop uh, Braylon on the leg. It was, once again, so soft. Mm-hmm. Please, no. I was like, don't okay. Hurt me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> These children here. These yeah, they children. don't. I mean, they don't get whoopings, and so I see a a pro and a con to all of that. And again, I think it's individual to the child and to the parent and to the circumstance on what you try to do. None of it is wrong if it's not abusive. Like if you're not hurting them, like you said, not disciplining your children physically when you're angry is super important. But yeah. if something arises to, hey, you need to know how serious I am, so you you get a whipping. Yeah, this is why you get a whipping. When you play that card, it should be known. Yeah. Oh wow, this is serious. Yeah. Right, but also what I've learned in throughout my time working with youth, it's it really doesn't matter what the discipline is Mm -hmm. as long as it communicates boundary and it's utilized as a teaching moment and it's consistent yeah because on the flip side i know kids who are disciplined consistently Mm -hmm. and aggressively Mm -hmm. and their behavior is still a problem i've worked with that kid Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. so that shows you that you just being aggressive with a child does not always result in good behavior what it results in a lot of times when you don't do it right is trauma and it results in um acting out like you'll see it more right you got to be able to teach mom so i don't care for a kid who likes moving around and likes being active sitting down in a chair (laughs) for a timer and putting a timer on and just saying no have a seat and before he gets up you communicate the behavior the expectation that can be so effective for that Mm -hmm. kid for a kid who likes watching tv nope cut off the tv for five minutes and then we'll have a conversation about what you did it really doesn't matter what the discipline is Mm -hmm. but if you think that because you were whooped means now i'm gonna whoop my child and that it's gonna be effective with that child you got nothing coming because who your child is is not who you were yeah and i've seen kids being beat from one severity level to the next and never have I seen whatever behavior been beaten out of a child. Like they get more sneaky. They get more crafty with it. My mom whooped some stuff out of me. (laughs) Never seen it happen. My mom never whooped in as much as she did. Like if I decided to stop doing something I did on my own or with me, I just got more cunning with my stuff. Like more sneaky. Yeah. I was just more sneaky with it. Like, okay, I can't just come to you and tell you that I'm going to do this. Now I just got to do it and, Oh, the consequences are the consequences. Like, I know what's going to happen. Yeah. But, yeah, it, she never t- beat the behavior out of me. Nah. There's there's no blanket way to raise a child. There's few things that are synonymous. You need love. You need... Grace. Grace. Um, and you need boundaries, right? Like, if you can do those things in honesty, I would say that. And there might be some other things that are just good. But ultimately... You can't. One thing this experience, this blended family experience, has taught me more than anything. They're all different. Every child is different, Mm -hmm. right? It's magnified that so much to me. Times five. How I deal, yeah. (laughs) How I deal with our oldest isn't the way I have to deal with 
the youngest. Youngest, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It, and it's not an age thing; it's a personality thing. It's what they require. What help? How do they learn? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So even the two nine year olds, like they're so different. Yes. Y'all the same age, y'all in the same class, y'all should be experiencing the same things at the same time. Not at all. Completely different people. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Completely different. But um, I will say one of the best opportunities, one of the best uh, ways that you can serve in this lifetime is raising a child um, in a loving environment. Like it's one of the most important jobs that exists. Yeah. So, And I think as parents too, we have to learn to give ourselves a little bit of grace. Like, I realized all the things that I did wrong with number one. So I went total opposite with number two just because I out of guilt. Almost mm-hmm. like, oh, I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have did this. I got to do this better. I need to have two parents in the household. I need to do all these things when it, I realized that it, there's never going to be a season where I do everything right. And as never. long as I do my best <laughs> and they're still alive to talk about it, we good. You doing your job. <laughs> a plus. Your job. No one's doing it perfect. <laughs> Nobody. Right. And there's some parents who thought they did it perfect and they got older and the kids still was like, you never did. It. You never were there for me. Huh? What? I did this by myself. I had to work doubles to keep lights on. Yeah. Nah. You were never there. <laughs> I looked, I saw, um, man, Master P and Romeo. Oh, yeah. It hurt my heart. But yeah. that, that shows you like, you know, this is a you guy who, everything. you know, mm-hmm. worked his way from the bottom and probably could afford any lifestyle and still you know, you still have to work through issues. You'll never be exempt from that. So, like you said, just you just got to do your best. Mm-hmm. Shout out to all the parents out there who are trying to do their best. You're Y'all killing it. In your kid's life, you're fighting to make sure that they turn out better than you did. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. Shout out to y'all. You did a good job. You're doing a good job. It ain't the same, it ain't the the same without the cuss word. Nah, I felt it. Don't, don't look at you. <laughs> you I, was, I was trying to find a word to replace that. It ain't one. Nah, don't do it. <laughs> it, it, it hit. It felt good. What else we got? What else we got? I'm coming up with all the topics. Oh, you want me to come up with some? Well, no, you don't have to come Ooh. up with it, but you have the clip of the one in your in your phone. I got one before that. Okay. This just came on the top of my head. Oh, Lord. And I'm just curious what you think about it. <laughs> what you think about this whole Diddy situation? I don't know what it is between the Nick Cannons and the Diddies and these high power men where usually if they have multiple women, it's like behind the scenes. You don't see it. I'm going to say something that I've literally told every dude that I've caught cheating on me. And it is the simple fact that when you are upfront and when you are honest, most women will go along with something that is mutually beneficial to them Mm. if it's presented to them right yeah i think diddy is a man of much wealth much um opportunity much uh influence Mm. to take a woman who may be not doing anything on her own yet and propel her somewhere or is doing something but isn't as big on uh a magnitude or a stage as what Diddy can put her on and it, just being close to him and being in a relationship ship with him can do so much for you that if he comes to you and he's like hey I like you I want to spend time with you I'm gonna help you grow your business I'm gonna help you build your brand the only thing is I need you to know up front you're not going to be the only one I think women will sign up for it a hundred times over. And I think that's what you see. And I think it is grown people minding their own business and hopefully getting their coins and getting their business and being close up to him and learning so that when that situation fizzles out, they not going to be left in the dust. So what are you saying? I'm saying it's all right to do what he's doing. If he's being upfront and honest and he's telling these people and they're coming into it, they're not looking. Well, I don't know what they're looking for, but I would assume that none of these people are looking for marriage. They're not looking to marry Diddy. They don't seem like they're looking to be in a relationship with him. Young Miami talks about her relationship with him and she's very candid that like it go both ways. I know what this is. I'm just having fun with him. If that's what you choose, who am I to tell you? You can't do that. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Opposite take. Okay. All right. So I think I, I think that in this day and age that people take what they can get, right? So if you're someone like a Diddy who has things that can provide a, 
push in your career. I think people will take that. I agree with you that that's probably what the situation is, but I still don't think that it um, substitutes for the real thing. I think most of these people, um, if they were in a healthy space, will want someone who could, I, I, I would even say, I can't speak for them, but this is just my educated guess. I don't know. But I'm guessing that Nick Cannon, amongst his multiple baby mothers, I bet you most of them, if they said, if he came to them and said, I just want to be with you, I think most of them would be ecstatic. If he said, listen, I've tried to do this thing, and I know it's been a lot, but I want you to know I see you. You do something for me that I've never experienced, and I want to be with you. I think they would be a one of them would be stuck. I can't speak for them once again. I want to be clear that I think the Diddy situation is very different from the Nick Cannon situation. I'm getting there. I'm walking. I'm getting there. <laughs> there are babies involved. Yeah, but even still, before there were babies, it was just that though. I don't think he's not coming to them like, hey, let's have a baby. Uh, he's coming to them like, I'm not sure about that. He spoke about it. He did an interview. You can check it out. He was on the Joe Budden podcast. They talked for three hours straight. So it's, you it's take n- that word, but his uh, his baby mama Abby De La Rosa did uh, the same interview and said like, I'm okay with what's happening. Nick tells us we're upfront. I can also go and do what I want to. That's do. true, but the, it, he's not coming to them like, hey, let's have a baby. They're having a relationship, and as so a they're result, having sex. You mm, don't know if they're having a relationship. I'm just going by what he said. Mm-hmm. I'm just going by what the man said. <laughs> It's a relationship. It's just their open relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be with other people. You can do your thing as well. We're having an open relationship. But it's still a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just an open one. And as a result, because they're having unprotected sex, and it's like a thing where they do uh, tests and everything. Yeah. They get tested. Um, but they're having babies. Once again, I stand by what I say. I think most people want to be loved in the way that God designed it. But I think most people haven't seen what it what it's supposed to look like. And most people don't see it happening realistically. So they go for what they can get. And if I can get rich in the process, be taken care of monetarily by these wealthy men, then I'll settle for that. But I'll t- say the same thing about Young Miami and the Diddy situation because it's not that different. He's being up front like, hey, look, we kicking it. I don't want to be like this, but hey, you got to say like, if you were me, then this is what you got to settle for. It's Diddy, so they'll settle for that. But I guarantee you that most of these women, if they really loved him and he loves them as well, like if he said that, they would want a monogamous relationship. But what about the people who, like, they don't want that. They don't want to be in love. They don't want to have a relationship. They just want to have fun and hang with somebody who has the potential to do them very well in life. What yeah. do you mean? That that sounds like an opportunity. That don't sound like a relationship. Who can do them well in life? What does that well, mean? Who said none of them ever say that they're in a relationship? I don't know. I'm not speaking on Nick Cannon, but she's young Miami specifically. She said she's really dating. the only one that talks about it freely. She said they're she dating. She said they're they're dating. They're, they're having, having fun. They he gets to do what she he wants to do. She gets to do what she wants to do. I don't. If you no, just look at Diddy's life <laughs> from jump. I'm I'm just saying we don't have to just judge this season of his life. Look throughout his entire life. There's only been one woman that he's claimed. Yeah, Kim. Yeah. He ain't married her. They had kids. She'll tell you there was infidelities there. That wasn't an open relationship. Like that's that's mm-hmm. recorded. <laughs> the multiple women that he's been with, like he's a wealthy man, and most wealthy men acquire lots of women that's just a thing king solomon was a wise man in the world he had like 800 wives <laughs> you know what i'm saying king david had a bunch of wives bash even that was the thing like i i still think that there's a way to do it and i think most people want to be in a healthy relationship and i do think some people will settle for that but i think most people who say i don't want that i don't think it comes from a healthy place so i'm just being honest that's my take I, I could be wrong but i think most people when they're emotionally healthy would want to be loved and loved well. And if you're someone who says, I need multiple people, or I know I'm just, I just want to have fun. So I'll sleep with you and I'll be with you and I'll be with you and I'll be with you, but just pay my bills and this. That's not healthy. Y'all can subscribe to whatever lifestyle y'all want to, but I think it's unhealthy. And I think most people, if they were healthy, would see that they just want to be loved well. You know what I mean? That's my take. I mean, I, I again, yeah. 
outside looking in, we don't know the operation of these people's minds nor their relationships. I do agree that a lot of time, um, I, women especially, I'm just going to speak for that side because that's the side that I know well, will settle to be in a relationship with somebody that they really want to be in a relationship with. So they'll take whatever that person is willing to give them. However, there is a plethora, a gang, an uprising of empowered women who are at a stage where they're like, I don't want to be in a committed relationship. And they choose to date freely or be with a man where there aren't as many commitments. And it's not because they're damaged or because they're emotionally unhealthy. What is it's it? because they know what they want in life. And right now they don't want to be tied down to one person. And you think that that's healthy? I do. If you can make that decision for yourself, I do. If some people I, decide to do crack, that don't mean it's healthy just because somebody I, decides to do so it. Everybody doesn't want to be in a relationship. You do realize that, right? And if you don't want to be in a relationship, where does that change? See, this is going just, back to the whole, yes, we don't. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, we, don't, we just don't agree. And I don't want to go back down that rabbit hole because we obviously know that we don't agree on the fact of like dating multiple people being okay. Like, that's blanket. We Especially don't agree when you talk on that about this standpoint. Because these people having sex, that's documented. They're talking about it. Yeah, I mean, they grown. They going to do what they want to do. I wouldn't recommend it. But, again, I can't tell you what you're going to do when you're, like, I do believe if you're dating multiple people, you should not be having sex with all them people. 100%. 100% agree with that. But I also believe that there is a place in, in life where you can be okay with not being in a relationship and making that that choice for yourself to date to hang out to do whatever but knowing that you don't want to be in a committed relationship i do not think that every time you agree to date multiple people that you're damaged i just don't agree with that i don't I, and i hope that's not what you hear me saying it sounds very much like you're saying like they're emotionally unhealthy or they're damaged because they choose to be in that situation no i said most people which doesn't mean everybody i said most people when they are emotionally healthy would want a relationship that also reflects that i don't think that one person pouring themselves out amongst many people especially with sex especially with sex is healthy i don't it's care not. it's not it's it's not to date to to have sex and spread yourself out against multiple people and you're giving them the same level of or making them think that it's a commitment even if you be enough friend and honest even if you i mean it's not so i don't think it's i said that before it's not healthy to have sex with multiple well, what was people the part when you said they ground because i mean ultimately if you're making that choice most adult people are having sex i'm not going to pretend like i have this silly lens on where no i'm talking I'm about like you can date but that you're doesn't not make it healthy though right so when i say that and you say well they grown that's like almost like you know what i'm saying i feel like people can make a decision from a healthy place to not be in a committed relationship, but to date multiple people and have fun. I do not think when you do that, you should be having sex with all of those people. Yeah. And I Period. think, yeah. And you right. Cause that, that conversation is different than what we're talking about. Cause we're talking about adults who are the scenario you just said, I can kick it with this person. I can advance in life. I can get money like that is exchanges of goods and services that's not a relationship i mean it's a relationship but i wouldn't say that it's healthy would you like i can sleep with you you'll pay my bills i can get money yeah i like but i don't want to commit to nobody i just want to get what i can get from you you're gonna give me sex and you're gonna give me money like that's what we've me, come to but fair exchange is no robbery so i feel like if you go into that making a conscious choice for yourself whether it's healthy or not, I think is a is another thing. But I don't want to make it. That's what like, I'm talking about. It's people it's, can do what they want. Everybody's free. Absolutely. So we're not talking about what people can do because everybody got free will. We're talking about what's healthy. That's the part that I'm on. It's healthy. So that's what I'm trying to get from you. You know that you. Please tell me you know that that's not healthy. Know that what's not healthy? What are you saying? I, 
I just want to kick it with you. You're going to help me advance in my career. I can get money. You can get sex from me. Like, we'll just, we grown. We can do what we want. Like, we're going to do that. You know that that's not healthy, right? Okay, so take, take. let's just say, take out the multiple people, right? It's, it's just one person, one person and who you're says, doing that. I know I can't, I, like, we're not going to be serious. You can get sex from me and I'll give you money. I don't want to take it serious. We're just going to have sex and you help pay my bills. Is that healthy to you? It's just one person, but it's an exchange of sex for money between two people. I don't think it's a relationship. I think it's is it healthy? <laughs> is it healthy? <laughs> just <laughs> I need to know that you understand that this is not healthy. I know you don't like, like, come on, come on. <laughs> I, I'm not. So why listen, is this? Even, what are you thinking about? What is the, the what, what is the part you're thinking about? Upon? Is just because you're grown and you can make that decision? No, a person having the coherent thought, right? Yes, it's coherent that they that want it? to do that and they don't feel like you know they're I, being cheated or they're being like you get something fair exchange is no right. You get something from how this, does that make it healthy? I guess, what is what does that mean? Healthy? A coherent thought. Just means that they understand why they're doing it. I don't think it's a they're relationship. They're okay with it. They're completely fine with it. Okay. I don't think it's a healthy form of a relationship. I will say that. Thank you. I don't because I don't think it's a relationship at all. I think it's an agreement. You, you're. It, I think it's a to make an agreement to do that would form be of an, prostitution. Yes. Thank you. I don't but even I know don't why you think was thinking so because hard Because I you're you're putting two things in no, I'm that not. don't go together. No, like I'm not. I don't think it's a healthy form of a relationship. No. No. But I don't think either people in that situation are looking at that as a relationship. It's a form of a relationship. It's an exchange. And even if you don't call it a relationship, whatever it is, it's not healthy. Whatever you call it. You can call it ham and cheese. It's still not healthy. Okay, let's move on. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you be stressed to be on this here microphone. I'm sorry, sir, but for what? We, you just like arguing. You know that that's it's not healthy. Not, I don't. It's not that I you just, just like arguing like, with you. It's not that. It's not that. But I think that you like to make things a little bit more black and white than they really are, and that's just my opinion on I know, that situation. But this is what we, we don't have about. to agree. Support that. I'm not talking about black and white for the human experience because I know. People have a bunch of ways that they choose to live life. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling anybody how they should live life. What I am saying is my opinion on what that comes from. Everybody decides what they want to do. Okay, so why can't we have different and op differing opinions? Why does We're, why is it so pressing that I agree with you in that aspect? I just want to know what you think. And I think sometimes you get caught up. This is my opinion. I could be wrong. But I feel like sometimes you get caught up in the the jousting of words that we do that sometimes it's not even about what's right. It's about I'm staying on what I, I said what I said. It's not even about right. And who who determines what's right? We're, we're once again we're doing a podcast. So when we get on the topic, we're going to talk it through. Yeah, absolutely. Support that. So and what's even more important about this is that when we talk it's not just us talking, right? We do it for the purpose of people pulling something yes. from. So when we're talking, if you feel me get passionate, is because I don't want anybody listening to think that if I have a relationship for our listeners, for our community, mm -hmm. we wouldn't, there's not one person who will write in and would say, hey, I got a guy I'm talking to, like, I'm not looking for a relationship, but he gonna pay my bills and I mean, we gonna do what we do. I don't They might not write in, but they might be in if that they wrote in They might you. be in that situation. If they wrote in to you. Yes. I, I know for a fact because I know you you will not write back and say hey girl you're grown do what you do get it how you live you wouldn't do that it depends on what relation, what advice she's soliciting she's huh <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that you wouldn't suggest that for anybody I you love I wouldn't suggest it for anybody why, I, well, that pause I love right there. why wouldn't you suggest that for anybody you love I, be, I just told you because I believe that it's a form of prostitution and it, but you were trying to t get me to get to the point of is it a healthy relationship? And I just if don't we just made it black or that. white, right? I, if we just made it black or white, let's just say we had to. Gun to your head, is it right or is it wrong? <laughs> Would you say it's right? Because 
none of our daughters would you want to live like that nobody no. close to you would you want to live I like that I wouldn't want that but I'm not telling anybody else how to make their decisions either I'm not I mean I I don't want it for myself I literally said and I don't recommend it for anybody but to say that if you make the choice for that to be how you deal with somebody that you're coming from an unhealthy place that's what I'm saying I don't agree with period so you can think can we move on so you think you can choose prostitution from a healthy place what you say <laughs> First of all, you're <laughs> listen just, to what you no, say. You're just twisting my words. No, that's I literally said it's a form of prostitution. So, but is I there mean, a form I of prostitution? That every that you relation, can pick from. Listen, every relationship has a give and a take in it. You get to determine what the give and what the take is, wow. but it's mutually beneficial for each and person in it. Cause if it wasn't, you wouldn't be in that situation. I'm saying, I just can't determine for you what is mutually beneficial for you and say if it's right or if it's wrong. I'm just saying we you. all benefit from a relationship in some kind of way. I feel you. And we're not trying to tell anybody what's right for them. From our soapbox that we got, we just trying to be like, hey, look, this is what I would suggest, mm -hmm. right? And I'm trying to get clear. Are you saying? I said what I suggest. I do not think that that is a relationship that anybody should be in. But if you make that choice for yourself, I'm not going to say that you're unhealthy because you made that choice. That's what, that's all I'm saying, period. I, I don't know how many other ways to say it. Can you queue up the next thing? Nah, you got the next one. What's the next one? <laughs> I don't, you got it. It's on your phone. Boy, you just, I think, I, I am convinced you just like arguing. I don't, I I think, I can't let it go. It's on. burning in my keep stomach. Going on. I can't, like, I don't know where it's at. Where did you send it to me at? I sent it to you in text message. So this clip, I'm going to set it up because <sighs> this, we were recently on a podcast called Ryan's Room. And opening conversation, I said that it was healthy for um, a man in a relationship to fear his woman. And me and the other person who is Sierra Jones, she was also the other woman that was on the podcast. Like we were in total agreement, but the men kind of didn't feel us where we were coming from when we were when, because we used the word fear. So this is a man who's kind of explaining that that same concept but from a man's perspective F flash flood warning there are cuss words in it buckle your seatbelt or mute it or whatever you need to if do. you got kids with you make sure they're not listening but we grown here put your grown ears on put your grown ears on <laughs> we still say but <laughs> these people is cussing so brace yourselves let me turn this up if you are hard on a man he he's gonna be scared of you you know what I'm saying? Women have power. They have the most power. The only thing that we're blessed with is they also have more emotions than us. If women didn't have emotions, men would be crying every fucking day. The damage, the damn, I told you that. The damage that a woman can do to a man is in not even close to what a man can do to a woman. That's what the, only, the only difference between that is you guys are more emotional and you guys are more loyal to men. So when I say this, so you got to be hard with the man, right? A man, we're, we're looking for your weaknesses. For Child. instance, mm -hmm. if, 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 if a man cheats on a woman, right, mm -hmm. and she cuts him off, she stop, don't talk to him for a day, two days, not, mm -hmm. t not talking to him, it's all good. It's but so but the second that you give him that, that in, that text back, we'll talk later, that just little thing, he know he got you. Yep. Oh, serious. A man, the once they know that, if they seriously fuck up, she is never going to talk to him again. She will never leave him. He's too scared to do it. And if he does do mm -hmm. it, he's going to make sure he covers every fucking ground because he's, he's scared he to lose you. But the problem is, yeah, we well, know deep down inside, once you guys are emotionally invested, no matter what we do, You'll come there up. is a way to get back. That's there, the problem. If you guys empowered yourselves and you like, listen, you know what? I'm the prize here. So what I was trying to express is that not necessarily being scared. I don't, I want my man to be scared of me, not like a physically threatening type thing. And I said it in a very joking manner, but I do believe that there is this level of like, if I do this, she's going to leave me. So it creates certain boundaries 
of things that maybe you are or aren't willing to do. Now, I do believe that if a man or a woman, whoever you are, wants to cheat, that you will cheat, no matter how scared of your woman is, no matter how uh, much you think you she going to leave you, like he said, you're just going to get a little bit more crafty with it. But I do think a healthy level of something exists there if you know that your woman or your man is not just going to take whatever they give to you. And the only way that you do that is by setting the standard up front. Now, some people do that by fear or some people just do it by, look, these are my boundaries. This is what I'm willing to accept and this is what I'm not willing to accept. And if you push me to that point, I'm gone. I do think that creates a little bit of a fear of I don't want to lose her so I'm not going to do this to a to a person who is not really looking to do that in the first place if you're looking to do that in the first place then you're gonna do it regardless you're cringing this guy and this whole take oh he's yeah a, he's like, an idiot yeah. no don't agree with him he's whatever a, this whatsoever. that take was stupidity that was dumb <laughs> that whole thing was dumb I don't think that real love has to have any element of fear um, I, I, I think that somebody doing right by you shouldn't come from a place of fear of what you'll do if I don't, whether that's you leaving or whatever it is, I think you should do those things because he genuinely loves you. Right. So I think more of a motivator that a man won't be dishonest. He won't cheat. He won't do these things. It's because he legitimately loves you. Not out of fear of if I do this, she going to leave or like, I don't. I don't think I think when you're dealing with a guy like that <laughs> right like if you're dealing with people like that then of course you're gonna have to do some crazy stuff you're gonna have to resort to mind games and I gotta be more this so the guy knows he said what do you say we're looking to see if you're weak you're looking to find your weaknesses like that's a specific type of guy like mm-hmm. that's a narcissistic trait like he's looking for how I can take advantage of you off rip we not talking about authentic love right there we're mm-hmm. looking for how can i have manipulate my way how can i manipulate you mm-hmm. how can i have my way with this scenario so you're dealing with uh, you're already dealing with somebody who's coming in with ill intention so of course you know and that guy right there he don't care if you're gonna leave him because ultimately what he wants in the relationship is to be able to do what he wants to do so not love you well in your mind there's no like healthy fear in a relationship no i don't think fear is a good motivator i don't think fear is a good motivator not at all i'm not afraid of anything you do i mean that wholeheartedly wholeheartedly when it comes to the decision making in our relationship uh doing the dishes even though i hate doing the dishes but the days when i just do it um Anything that I do that's against my nature, but I know it makes you happy, there is no part of that where fear is a motivator. Mm. It's not a part of my makeup. Everything I do for you comes from a place of, I want to love you well. I want you to be happy. I have a different experience. Mm. So when we got in a relationship, I I had only had one example of how relationships go. Mm. And it was very toxic. I never have had what one would call a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I don't think I've ever seen an example of a healthy relationship until I was a full grown adult and my mind had already been set on (laughs) what a relationship looked like. Seeing that example was like, oh, well maybe things could be done differently. Um, But showing that behavior in myself and acting that out in a relationship didn't have it. When we got in a relationship, I could tell immediately that there were some things about the way that I previously behaved in a relationship that could not fly because if they did, we would be done. That created a healthy fear, I believe, in me that's like, if I result to doing X, Y, and Z, this is a good man, Brandon, you will one, push him away, and two, he will leave you. You have got to figure out how to govern yourself accordingly in this relationship where love is being fostered, where safety is being fostered, where honesty is being fostered. I had no idea how to do how to do that. And being scared to lose you drove me to figure out how to get myself together. Mm. Well, what about when you don't care no more? When who don't care no more? What about in a when we get into a bad place in the marriage? 
if we get in a bad place mm-hmm. in marriage. <laughs> but it happens, right? Everybody has mm-hmm. seasons where you're not doing well. And you're not going to care every day, <laughs> right? There might be some days where we'll be like, you know what? You can leave and I'm good. I've been divorced before and I do it again, right? In those moments, what makes you love me well, right? I th- I th- I don't. I mean, I can't foreshadow or predict. In my heart, I don't believe that I'd ever get to the point For where, the sake of argument, let's just say you do. Well, I, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, because you don't know if you will, <laughs> but is it a possibility? Is it a possibility that I will get to a point where I don't care when you leave? Yes. If you leave? Sure, it could be a possibility. But I also believe that we would be in in serious trouble at that point. Right. Support that. Our relationship is in danger. This is not just us our every day. This is how we communicate with each other. Now we're at a point where something has happened. Something has broke us apart to the point where I don't care if we're together. Great. Anymore. That's the scenario. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then I, how do I love you? I don't, I don't know because at that point I've probably given up and I probably like, I don't care. Cause it, I, the only time I could see myself getting to the point where saying, I don't care is if I've given up on trying to love you well. I don't, I don't see any other, any other world where it would be like, Oh, I don't care if you leave. No, never. I mean, it happens. Sometimes you just had those moments. Like for me, there were days where I wanted to fight for it. And some days when I was like, I can't do this. With us? Some, no, no. I'm talking about my past marriage, past marriage where you like, some days you're like, you know what? We can do this. You know what I mean? <laughs> or then you had days where you're like, you know what? I can't do this. But it's like the ebb and flow of emotion. You don't know how you're going to feel day to day, especially when it gets bad. Because there are going to be days when you don't feel like it, when you don't feel it. Like when you're going through a rough patch, you know what I mean? There might be some days where like, you know what? I can't do this. And it don't always be because, you know, it might just be a rough patch, you know? Yeah, and those I, are the days where, you know what I'm saying? Well, I also believe that doing the work like i said it that fear of losing you drove me to want to get to a better place within myself so that i didn't exhibit those behaviors i didn't have the 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 will or whatever like it just wasn't in me anymore and i do feel like maybe yeah that old person could come back but i feel like i've done a lot of work to refine myself to get rid of toxic behaviors to do better for me which in turn allows me to do better for you that regardless of the place that we went in i'm not gonna be that girl no more yeah Uh. so that's where i'm getting at is the the fear of the things the person that i was could absolutely ruin this relationship drove me to be better and i do believe that you think that's bigger than just your love for me do you think the fear of losing me is like i said it, it pushed me to do better for me, right? I'm a better person because of that. The fear of losing me? Yes, because it if caused me to address things that I maybe not necessarily when I was in a relationship before realized were toxic. But now when I'm in a relationship where the standard is different, I'm like, yeah, that's toxic behavior. Like you, you're sis, you're toxic. And I didn't want to be toxic, yeah. but because I had done a lot of work previously on my spiritual self, the things that I hadn't been able to work on were, was because I wasn't faced with them. So yeah, I was cool with, I stopped cussing, I stopped drinking, I stopped doing all the, these, you know, the things that outwardly I felt like were pushing me away from God. But now when I'm forced to look at myself and who I am inside of a relationship, I realized that there was still some stuff there, regardless of all the work that I had done, there was still some stuff there that I hadn't been confronted with because I wasn't in a relationship. I thought I was good because I wasn't dealing with somebody coming back at me about the decisions that I was making. Somebody telling me that I was wrong in the way that I was handling my kids. Previously, if that conversation would have happened, I would have cussed somebody smooth out, probably tore some stuff up and just acted outside of myself. But I knew that if I did that in this relationship, you would have been like, she's not the one for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I do believe that there is a level of healthy fear. and not- I've never heard that term. You keep saying that. It's rubbing <laughs> me the wrong way. I've never heard of healthy fear. Like a healthy fear is like, so, like you're going 
like of heights. Like I have a healthy fear of heights. Like if I had no fear of heights, I would don't go do these crazy things That's that could not have true. me have me. What's not true? There are people who don't have any fear of heights, but they and just they have do the, the most n- ridiculous thing. No, they have a <laughs> knowledge of I can't climb to the top of the tree without. You know what I'm saying? Like there's people who climb mountains. You know what I'm saying? Safely, they have protection. They have gear. They get to the top. They get down. It's a healthy habit that doesn't they have a healthy fear of dying and they know to do things that <laughs> will not cause them but, to die. But you know what I mean? When you put the word fear, right? Like, I don't know. It, maybe it's just the word fear. They say, and we, said that, on, I keep we hearing, said that on Ryan's podcast too, that like, like maybe it's not fear. Maybe yeah. it's respect or whatever it it's is. It's love. But, like you not wanting to be without me is because you love me. Not because you're afraid you know what I mean, of losing me, like, it's not the fear of losing me, it's the love that you have for me, like, I'd like to think that you do things, and you're a certain version of yourself with me, because you love me, not because of this in your head, like, I don't want to leave me, I don't want him to leave me, you know what I'm saying, and we've had conversations about, you know what I mean, where that comes from, you know what I'm saying, I think, me loving you was obviously a part of it, It but I loved you before I was ready to address those things, huh? I loved you before I was Dressed. ready to address the, the the toxic traits that I know that I can e- exhibit in a relationship. I feel you. Yeah. I just, yeah, I feel you. Maybe we just got to find a better word because yeah, <laughs> that word fear. Like I just, I don't see that being up in the, I'm, once again, this is just my vantage point. I don't see that being a part of my makeup or a driving force for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, yeah, because it almost breeds like a code, not, is that the word, codependency? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, like, what that, like, where you just have to be with somebody, right? No. I can't be without you, right? You know what I mean? I don't want you to leave me, so I'm going to be good because I don't want you to leave me. No. That. That, But that's unhealthy. Yeah. That's why I said a healthy fear. Huh? How can you say (laughs) something's unhealthy if that's how they choose to live their life? That codependency is unhealthy. So thinking that you can't live without somebody else. I mean, hey, that's not healthy. Because if that person grown. decides to leave you, you you're gonna like. What are you gonna do? They're Die. grown. Okay, I'm being petty. I'm just I know. <laughs> but um, ultimately, like when you're trying to come up with motivators, right? Like, mm-hmm. why am I? behaving the way I'm behaving in this relationship when it comes especially when it comes to stuff that goes against our nature mm-hmm. right like for me it's like what like let's see, I keep bringing up the doing the dishes what's mm-hmm. something that in our relationship that you have made a part of our relationship that doesn't come naturally to you like the things that you said like you had to if I do this then he'll he won't stay like what what is that what are those things oh, the the crazy stuff or the good stuff the crazy stuff like the stuff that you are trying that fear made you not do oh yeah like just being erratic irrational flying off the handle like there are times where i want to be I, well i would say should say wanted to be upset in the way that i usually would be upset which we've had discussions before about what that looks like but because i know that that's not gonna fly in our relationship i've had to learn how to talk my emotions out. I've had to learn to express myself using my words instead of my actions, which is a big turn for me. Because literally, if I felt angry, if I felt frustrated, if I felt disrespected, Mm -hmm. I was going to make you feel the exact same thing, whether that was with my words or whether that was with my actions. But I was going to make you pay for how you made me feel. Yeah, I know I can't do that. And I realized realize that that's not even good for me as a person not just in a relationship but I didn't I I really didn't grasp that until I was confronted with the fact that yo if you behave that way you're going to not only lose him but you're going to lose people close to you because it had never happened before so when it comes to those things you would say that the main driving force for you addressing those behaviors is a fear of losing me or would you say the main thing is you love me I think that what made it real to me was 
that I knew that if I did that, that I would lose you. I, I remember very so early, listen, more. very early on, I remember flipping out on you in a way that I don't think you were used to. And I, I remember you being like, yo, this is me. Like, it's me. Like you were trying to get me to come back to reality in a situation where I had lost sight of it. That f- fear was like, was what turned the light on right the love is what made me pursue and continue to work on it but the main thing is the fear the main thing that brought it to my attention was the fear the main thing that makes me work on it daily and keep it away is the fact that I love you but before that was even a factor in my head I was confronted with the oh you about to lose him yeah So now And because I love you I don't want to lose you So how do we address this With a person Who genuinely feels like They won't leave Right So What do you mean So Like the guy was saying Like if a guy is with a girl And he knows He can always find his way Back to Like she She'll be back You know what I mean Mm -hmm. Are you saying for them There's no way for them To be loved healthy Because they haven't established The fact Oh I'll leave you I'm sorry, I don't understand. Like in this scenario, yes. like you're you're saying the fear of me leaving is what made you address that. What if you know I'll stay? What if you know that I love you so much that I'm going to be here? That I don't know if that would have made me initially, mm-hmm. if that would have made me now if because I love you and you're coming to me and saying, Hey, B you can't keep doing this. Like yeah. it's not making me happy. I'm, I love you. We married. I'm not going anywhere, but this is detrimental to our relationship. It's killing me in the inside. I can't be with you. Even if you knew you were never going to leave, mm. I can't be with you. If you continue that because I love you, mm. I would, I would try to change that. And that's the part that I think makes me unsettled with that. Right. Because there's some people who are, super loyal people who are more inclined to give themselves fully to the people that they love. They love hard Mm -hmm. and they're strong with their emotions and it takes a lot for them to walk away. And those are the people that get damaged so much absolutely, because they have to be met with some fear when really it sucks that that has to be a thing. Cause honestly, you should be able to come to me and say what you're doing hurts me. And even if I know you're not going to leave because I love you, <laughs> that should be enough. And I think when fear has become an element, like it just, I don't know. To me, I feel like it, it takes it to a place where it's, it's, it takes away from what it's really about because I, relation. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just, I just feel like it's about, it's about love. Right. You know what I mean? The fear of somebody leaving should, you know, that should, I, I mean, of course, like that should exist. But even if they going to stay, you know what I mean? You still got to love them well. You know what I mean? Because not everybody gets that element of fear and they still got to be loved well. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I do. I think in your scenario too, like if, if we had gotten to the point where you had to have that conversation with me, like the way that you're reacting, the way that you're talking to me, the way that you come, come in this house, like a cyclone and tear things up when Mm. you're upset, like that's not making me healthy. It's great. And it's a good conversation, but I think we would have gotten way far in our relationship before you would have had that conversation with me where early enough for me, because you set a standard on how our relationship was going to go and what you would and would not tolerate, that triggered for me way earlier than I think it would have if you were just like, look, I'm going to take whatever you give me and I, you know. Yeah, no one's going to actually say that. But, <laughs> no but one's going to verbalize but, but that. But what I'm saying is yeah. that conversation comes after repetitive and repetitive and repetitive conversations yeah. or, or incidences. So you're talking about boundaries. Me. Yeah, that boundary and that well, that's what we said yeah. on Ryan's podcast. Like that boundary that was set created a a awareness. Maybe it's not a fear. Maybe it's an awareness for me that if I travel over this, this man could possibly leave me, yeah. and I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure that that doesn't happen. If he should decides to leave, it's not because I don't know how to handle myself and control my mouth. For sure. Yeah, yeah. 
So maybe awareness is the word. That maybe so much fear better. is not. That felt so much better. <laughs> as soon as you said it, it was like the clouds <laughs> opened up and I saw the sunshine come through. Awareness. Yes, maybe okay. it's an awareness that these things aren't going to be tolerated in boundary. this relationship. And he's this is a toxic individual. Yeah. But I, if he would have said awareness, maybe in that conversation, I'll <laughs> nah, <laughs> maybe because nah, there was a whole bunch of <laughs> foolishness aside from the word. But when he, but when I did come up on that clip. Because I already had that understanding in my head, I did get where he was coming from. I didn't under, I didn't agree. That's because you used to date guys like that. Maybe that's why you like, yo. That's what I was talking about on the podcast. I'm healed, changed, and delivered now. Hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, y'all. Bring your hot takes to the live tomorrow. We want to hear from you. Clearly, me and Brandy have found ourselves in one of our classic. Uh, Differing opinions. Differing opinions, which always make for a good episode. So uh, I want to hear from you guys. We want to hear from you guys, as always. Um, I'm trying to think. Nope. Lost my thought. Mm -hmm. Say something. So we will be here (laughs) Wednesday live on Facebook and YouTube. That community is growing. Like, we have... So many people coming in now that don't have a personal connection to us that just listen to the podcast and want to be a part of the lives. It's lit over there. Y'all listen every week on Thursday. Y'all hear how it goes down. Please join us on Facebook or YouTube, preferably Facebook because they're giving us money. Um, and, and also that's where <laughs> that's where most people view it at. It is. So it is. We got a connect. couple loyal YouTubers, but and, Facebook is yeah. where everybody is. And you can see everybody's comments and you can reply to their comments. It's fun. And it's Come good on. to put a face to the names, right? Yes. Like that's when, when we meet and converse with y'all on live. That's when we kind of get to build that personal connection because mm-hmm. there's people who I don't really know, but I feel like I know. Shout out Sherelle. O'Reilly, what's going on? Rainisha. Rainisha, what's going on? <laughs> Shout out to you guys. There's so many people that we built built a rapport with just from kicking on the live, yeah, hearing absolutely. their personality. Oh, Candace. Candace, yes. what up? <laughs> Round of applause for you too. Um, but the lives are always, um, they're, they're like, the lives to me, and I love the podcast episodes. Mm-hmm. Like I've gotten so, um, I've fallen in love with this form of communication and content. But we, this is how we started. Like mm-hmm. it was us talking to people and us going back and forth. Y'all chime in. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where it started. At. So Wednesdays is when it feels like home. It's like what the whole point of this was. Like, and I can't imagine. Like I'm glad that we post the lives on Thursday. But without being there, I can't imagine. I've never listened to a kickback episode. You haven't? Never. Oh, because I, love I can't imagine what it's like. It, it must seem so discombobulated. It, because It doesn't like, though. <laughs> well, maybe not to me because what I'm What are there. they talking about? Because the, sometimes the comments come in after we've already moved on from the conversation and then we start reading it. Yeah. So you just have to be there. It's lit for real. Like we have the time of our lives and I can tell you, most of the time on Wednesdays, about seven thirty, I'm like, "Uh, we gotta go live." Yeah, but by the eight thirty on the dot, it's popping. I start, snap we, we out of it, <laughs> and so. then I'm like, "I don't want to go." I'm still advancing the conversation an hour in because it's just it's, it's real. Lit. It's fine. It's so, lit. so come join us tomorrow, nine thirty Eastern Standard Time on Facebook. Um, what they never told us, and even if you don't have Facebook, or what they never told us on what Facebook. Yes, yeah, just what they never told us. Just what they never told us. And even if you don't have Facebook, join us on YouTube. We've had people start watching on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. And um, you'll always find us there a lot easier. So, yeah, just come kick it with us. Absolutely. So, we will be there. Yes, and always remember oh, we... Ooh. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I've got a comment about this. Wait, wait, wait. I got something for you. Uh. <laughs> you ain't do it right. <laughs> you got work on your disapproving, <laughs> sucking your teeth. <laughs> But I got a comment about this. Somebody keeps missing it. It's 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So if I you're. That. Huh? I said that. I want to emphasize it because <laughs> I got a comment about it on TikTok. Somebody was complaining that they keep missing the lives. Um, it's Eastern Standard Time. So if you don't join us based on the time difference on your yeah. time zone, you're going to miss it. So, so if you live like overseas in the UK, you. It's like 2.30 in the morning, so... Unless you, you work third shift or something. <laughs> Maybe you just got off of work. You still up, can't get no sleep. Join us, okay? But uh, we'd love to have you either way. So, yeah. Sorry to ruin your, your uh, exit. 
I want to emphasize that, but he's not sorry. I'm sorry. I always remember we love love. Y'all should love love too. Peace. Peace.